In this week's videos, we've studied parsing, of course, as a prelude to extracting information from sentences. Um, information like, what do you want the computer to do if you tell it, play my music? You want it to play something. Information like, what do you want the computer to perform the action play on, on my music? Here, we will look at a third and simpler way to parse a sentence. It's a technique called chunking. And chunking separates the sentence into its larger components, so that you have the verb phrase, and then the noun phrase, my music. Play my music. So I heard this. I heard someone say this the other day to their commercial device. Play Fleetwood Mac. And what would happen if a computer got this string? Play Fleetwood Mac. After it's done the speech recognition, of course. Um, the computer could assign parts of speech. For example, play is a verb, Fleetwood is a noun, and Mac is another noun. We could have a constituent parsing, so that when you get play Fleetwood Mac, you could construct a VP, which has a verb, play, and then a noun phrase, Fleetwood Mac. So with a constituency parsing, you could ask the computer, what is the action? It's in the verb, play. And who are you performing play on? V, on the sister of V, and P, Fleetwood Mac. And what is the action that we want with Fleetwood Mac? The sister of NP is V, play. So if we have a constituency parsing, we can determine those. We would also do this with a dependency parse, where we have, for example, the word play, which is the root, because the verbs are the roots in dependency parses in English. That's the action. And then it would draw an arc of object relationship or direct object relationship to Fleetwood, and that will draw an arc toward the compound related word Mac. And by the way, this format for dependencies is a format co uh, called Conolo, and I've left you a link there if you want more information about it. So as you can see, both types of parsing, constituency and dependency, do a lot of things and go into a lot of detail about the sentence. But sometimes we don't need that much detail. Sometimes we just need the computer to get the action, play, and then what we want the action performed on. Fleetwood Mac, the noun phrase there. These larger pieces are, are called chunks, and we're going to perform an operation called chunking, which doesn't go into as much detail as constituency parsing or dependency parsing. It just wants the larger parts of the sentence. So as we know from previous videos, constituency parsing is hierarchical. Trees have different levels and different levels of branching. However, chunking is Flatter. Chunking is the identification of the segments that match the major parts of speech. For example, getting the noun phrases or the verb phrases. And it has uh, chunking parses have flat structures because we are uh, not interested really in the connections between them. We just want to extract the noun here and then the verb and then the noun after the verb. So uh, an, a chunking operation could be uh, like the one here, where you have the morning flight, and that's just identified as a noun phrase, from, and that's just a part of a, a prepositional phrase, Denver, another noun phrase, and has arrived, a verb phrase. And we're not interested in any further detail of how it works inside. The way it does this is by using a kind of tagging called IOB, tagging. And the IOB letters refer to B, the beginning of a chunk, I, the intermediate part of a chunk, and O, any elements that are outside a chunk. So what the computer is going to try to do is mark everything for one of these three positions. For example, the word the is the beginning of a noun phrase. The second word, morning, is in the middle, in the intermediate position of a noun phrase. The third word, flight, you would think that it would be in like the end position of a noun phrase. But uh, check this out. We're going to tag this as the intermediate position of a noun phrase, and we're going to indicate the beginning of a new structure just by jumping to a new beginning. 
So everything is going to be tagged beginning, intermediate, intermediate, and then another beginning. And that's how we're going to know that one um, chunk ended because we switch from intermediates to the beginning of a new thing. So the morning flight is the beginning of the noun phrase, intermediate noun phrase, intermediate noun phrase. And then we have the beginning of something different, a prepositional phrase. Notice that we just have the beginning because then we jump, jump to the beginning of a different thing, the beginning of another noun phrase, Denver. And then we jump to the beginning of a verb phrase and to the intermediate part of a verb phrase, arrived. So has is the beginning of its verb phrase and arrived is the beginning I'm sorry, the intermediate part of its verb phrase. So, so far we've only used the B and the I. Sometimes we want an O because we only care about specific things. For example, maybe we only care about noun phrases because we're trying to find proper names or the names of cities, of companies, of restaurants, and so forth. So sometimes we use an O to indicate parts that we do not care about, that are going to be outside of the chunks we're looking for. For example, again, a very, a very popular type of chunking involves only finding the noun phrases. So you get that though is the beginning of a noun phrase, morning is the intermediate part of a noun phrase, flight is the intermediate part of a noun phrase, and then from is outside of a chunk, because we are not looking for prepositional phrases, only for noun phrases. And again, we know that the noun phrase ends because this is the boundary between intermediate part of a chunk and outside of a chunk. So this is how we know we have transitioned into something different. And then Denver is the beginning of another noun phrase. And then we are outside of a chunk because we do not care about finding out what has and arrived actually are. We only care about the nouns. And again, we could be doing this if we are extracting uh, named entities, which we'll do next week, which is just finding the proper names in a sentence. Maybe we only care about time uh, when something happened, in which case we're also going to be looking for nouns, not necessarily for prepositions. All right. So how do we do this? Um, for example, we could convert a constituency tree into a chunking tree just by flattening the structure and flattening and having all of the words in the NP, all of the yield of the NP marked as either the beginning or intermediate, 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 and then jumping onto something else. Once you accumulate many of those, you can train a classifier, for example, something where you have the, the morning flight from Denver and you take as features things like uh, if you're classifying, I'm sorry, if you're classifying the word flight, in this example, we're trying to figure out what is the chunk for flight. We know that the is the beginning of the NP, morning is the intermediate part of the NP. So what is the chunk for flight? We could use a classifier and we could take as our input features two words before me, the, the part of speech of two words before me, the chunk from two words before me, the word before me, the part of speech before me, the chunk before me, the, to the word itself, the part of speech of the word itself, the following word, part of speech following word, two words ahead, part of speech of two words ahead. So you could have a bunch of features that represent your word and try to train a classifier so that it then produces the output that the word flight is the intermediate part of the chunk noun phrase. And of course, once you have accumulated enough of these, you can train fancier systems to identify these. In our exercises for the week, we are going to look at the chunking algorithm. We're going to look at the chunking function for the package Spacey. The evaluation works similar to what we studied before. Precision is the number of correct chunks divided by the number of predicted chunks of chunks in the predicted structure. And recall is the percentage of correct chunks as compared to the number of chunks in the gold standard marked uh, chunk parse. So as a summary for chunking, chunking is the procedure to identify only the major parts of a sentence, such as noun phrases and verb phrases. 
it helps us extract major components like subjects, verbs, or maybe just the nouns in a sentence. We use a kind of tagging called IOB for intermediate, uh, out, and beginning of a chunk. And that's the way we're going to mark our words. And this has uh, leads to a flatter structure and to a structure that doesn't have as much detail as the constituency parts, for example, but maybe we don't need that much detail for what we want to do. Which is just to get the computer to play Fleetwood Mac. Play my music. As a macro summary of the week, we've described um, several ways to parse human languages. We can have uh, full constituent parsings with uh, rules like in generative grammar, where you have that a sentence is a noun and a verb phrase, and from this you can generate an, an infinite amount of sentences. So we can have constituency parsing, for example. We can have chunking, which is just splitting a word into large components. We could have dependency parsing, where you need to figure out uh, what's the subject of a verb, what's the direct object of a verb, and so forth. Creating these is expensive and difficult, and uh, eventually we can create databases called tree banks, and we can use these to train statistical models, deep learning models that can help us do the parsing. And once we have these tools for parsing, we can begin extracting information and ultimately knowledge from these sentences. This is going to be the topic of next week.